Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where together we are going to be diving into the Bitcoin chart today. We're going to be examining every single pivot high and low and how this has come about over the past few days. Moving on to what is happening right now on the Bitcoin chart, the support and resistances that we are up against, the trades that I am currently in and how I am looking to approach the unique week of trading that we have coming up next week as we lead into Christmas. Obviously this is generally a holiday period for a lot of people and uh you know obviously the trades are somewhat affected by this so i think it's important to cover this in a video where i am very 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 happy as always to be honest with you hope that i can share the passion with trading with you today as uh i'm not sure i'm going to title this video maybe as well as exposing <laughs> if that's a good word just highlighting to you why you have to truly truly trade the charts because that is how we are making money right now. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to absolutely love the video. All you need to do is block the distractions around you. Give me your full focus and let's do some analysis together. So as always, starting off these videos, we are going to go over the past, you know, few days of price action, really from this low to the high, because that's absolutely pivotal to what is happening right now. We have to understand and comprehend these two last pivots to understand what's happening right now and where we are going to be going next. OK, so I hope that makes sense. And without further said or do, let's be in. So, yes, yeah, so I'm going to have a little bit of fun with today's video. I, uh, I definitely am going to have a little bit of fun. That's safe to say. Uh, why is there going to be a little bit of fun? Oh, because we're going to be joking around with some of the, uh, well, you all know my opinion on these people. I've gone over it enough. But uh, yeah, just to highlight, really, why were, why, what, what is happening on this section of the charts? Why is price going up and down? You know, there's going to be a few things thrown around here. Is it because of well manipulation? Is it because of the Fed having their announcements? Is it because of fundamentals? Or is it because of over leveraged traders? Okay, shorting breakdowns, longing breakouts, getting trapped, and then getting squeezed. Okay, e.g., you come to technical areas of support where a well defined you know, experienced trader recognize there's a long position, but you have on the counter of that, the general retail investors that are getting very scared at breakdowns. They are taking their short positions. Okay. You could say there's a, let's say 10 million different people shorting into, you know, a handful of people longing. There's a lot of short orders coming together into the fewer traders, long orders, which are matched in size because for every one short contract is every one long contract. So you need a lot of people fearful for the few to fill their long positions, remembering 95% of traders lose money. Okay, that's a well-known statistic right now. Okay, so what is happening at this moment in time? What is the absolute takeaway from this video? And that is take care, ladies and gentlemen, take care with what you read online, because what happened here? Well, we had obviously a move down on the 13th. OK, what, you know, we have to laugh about this on the 13th. What happened? Why did why was this at low put in exactly where it was put in exactly as predicted? Where was this low put in? Well, I'm sorry, Carl, but it, it has to be noted. The low was put in right on the liquidation price. Never a random pivot on the chart, never a random pivot at all. But obviously <laughs> from from this, the low was put in right on the liquidation. People get liquidated, as we say, price turns around. How about that? But there was also a second factor, a second factor, the low obviously being the liquidation price. But what was the icing on the cake? The breakdown of the head and shoulders, the absolute emergency that we saw that day of, oh, my God, the bearish head and shoulders has broken down. What could go wrong here? What could go wrong here? We are in a perfectly well-defined sideways range and we start to break down from a head and shoulders pattern, uh, which is actually a reversal pattern, not a continuation pattern to start with. But nevertheless, we apparently start to break down from the head and shoulders. OK, so we get the liquidation. Then we start to get the fear coming in with head and shoulders. OK, and my idea is this. Well, actually, no, let's not break down for the head and shoulders. Let's reverse this back to the upside. OK, so so you can get into my brain. So this is not just a comedy show. It's actually something that you could learn from. I'm I'm starting to think to myself, OK, we have a well-defined range. If you see here, we have a range low. Okay, and we obviously have our well-defined range high, but we're focusing on the range low here. 
We come down, we get our big liquidations. You know, you can check this over in your order flow software. You start to get your liquidations coming in. And we <laughs> we saw that for ourselves. Um, you get your liquidations coming in. You actually form, you know, a wick down below the range low. So you wick down below it, get your liquidations back up. Okay. And we're also obviously on our DNPOC uh, support zone. Okay. So we recognize this is a support zone. We are not interested in shorting the breakdown of this range. The only thing that we're thinking of, is this a long yes or no? And we are actually granted with a long setup. Okay, we're granted with the long setup because we see those liquidations come in, we get our valid wick to the downside and we see our support holding. Okay, this is a, you know, a perfectly valid long to be taking. E.g. we're not taking these breakout shorts like the 95% of people are doing. We are the 5% we are thinking for ourselves and we recognize we want to buy when everybody else is, is fearful, unnecessarily fearful we could say. OK, so from this idea, we obviously are looking for that rise to the upside and we absolutely got it. OK, we got that. We obviously looking for the rise off of the <laughs> bearish head and shoulders pattern and we got that rise off the head and shoulders pattern. And again, um, this is a mixture. Of, it's primarily based off of I'm not going to lie. This is this is primarily based off of the order flow that comes in when you hit a significant level. So obviously had that DNPOC. It is a significant level of support. OK, it's not just that volume level. It's also like an SR flip. It's also the bottom of the range. OK, you're also seeing trap traders at the, and the liquidations at the low. I know uh, this might be classed as fairly advanced and I'm not going to lie. It, 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 I suppose it is fairly advanced trading, but, um, you know, it's not impossible to you can absolutely learn this. So, yes, it takes a little bit of time and dedication to truly understand that and experience, of course. but. Um, that, that this is truly why the market is moving every single day. Okay, it really is the reason. And um, obviously, yeah, we got we got our rise off of that. So then, what 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 was happening up here? What is what we what's happening? Just just think about this. We're getting a rise after trapping shorts at the low. Okay, we get our, our initial rise here, where the shorts at support are getting liquidated, and then on the flip side of that not even 24 hours later, apparently we start to break out from a W pattern. I mean, I'm showing you these examples to just highlight to you, think here, think what's happening, think what is happening. Once again, like and retweet so the bulls don't miss it, don't miss what, the, apparently a breakout. 24 hours, <laughs> 24 hours after shorting the breakdown of the bearish head and shoulders pattern, we are, well, <laughs> retail, I suppose, are looking to long the breakout of this lovely W pattern, which is just a pattern I would never trade in my life, but a W pattern breakout. And it's kind of like this meme that I posted. Isn't this funny that every single rise, it's, oh my God, an emergency breakout. Every single drop, it's, oh my God, an emergency breakdown. Buy the high, sell the low. Buy the high, sell the low. What happened once again? Buy the high. It's another breakout. But what's happening at this moment in time? Of course, we know we don't buy the breakouts because what's happening? We obviously, well, this was during our Twitch live stream. Okay, I've done a live stream on Twitch the other day. And we were looking at this order flow live in the time. While people were calling for the breakout of a W pattern of everything, while people were calling for the breakout of the W pattern, we actually done a simple swing failure pattern. So again, this was on Twitch the other day, but what we were looking at here is we obviously had our high. We took that high. OK, we've done a swing failure pattern of that high and the confluence was that we had, <clears throat> you know, 15 million trapped longs in the high of that breakout. OK, so really simply, once again, like a mimic of the low, we have then seen breakout traders absolutely going mental with their long positions up at the high. You get a swing failure pattern. You come down to the low of the mini range, which was lost. There was no effort to be put seen at the range low. We really simply lost that. And then we're gonna be looking down towards our next support zone, which is once again, surprise, surprise, the NPOC uh, with the range POC on the CC, okay? So you can start to see here how we are reading order flow to recognize where we get our trap traders. We are then understanding if we see a valid setup with trap traders and wicks above levels, we're taking that trade. And then we're understanding, okay, take profit one can be the range low 
of the mini range, take profit two, can be down and around our higher volume levels of support, which we will then look to reverse that trade. E.g., when people are looking to short the head and shoulders breakdown, we're looking for longs. When they're looking to long the breakout of the W pattern, we're looking for shorts. And nevertheless, surprise, surprise, when it comes down to our CC level of support, we're going to be looking for longs again, where we can imagine the majority are looking for shorts. Why? because exactly like the meme shows, every single move down, they're looking to short, and every move up, they're trying to long. Whereas we are, every single move up, we're looking to short, every single move down, we're looking to long. Yeah, flipping, flipping that on its head. And surprise, surprise, uh, obviously, oh yeah, that was the confluence that we also had on that move, by the way. Fibonacci from high to low, also the CC. So we saw the swing failure pattern trap longs into the CC resistance, into apparently the W pattern breakout. And we moved then from this CC, taken a Fibonacci once again from this low to this high. You know, obviously this is the CC. We moved down into that level. Okay, so the level we're ready and waiting for, we move down into it, we see the reaction. Okay, we see you know, the support holding. And not only this, not only this, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's the print screen. Again, this is taken from the Twitch live stream that I was in, where we were looking at this live in the time, over 50 million shorts opening at the PD Val into the CC, into the, into the um, uh, DNPOC. So it's just like, once again, three plus levels of confluence with your trap shorts. Okay, we see the trap shorts into support, e.g. massive sh massive shorts opening into support, and then you get your follow up by the uh, buying imbalances coming out of the level. Okay, so I mean this is not a surprise. This this is truly not surprising when you understand this. It's like it, it's like clockwork. It really is because it's the same thing that's happened now on every low and every high. Every high you get the trap traders. Every low you're getting these trap traders and then it's price reversing against them. It's clockwork. It really is clockwork. And obviously, once again, it was into that confluence zone. What happens? We start to get a rise in price. OK, and actually we had a lovely confluence, the icing on the cake, like we've seen the head and shoulders break down, the w, w pattern breakout. What was the icing on the cake at this low? Well, you couldn't have made it up. Literally at that very low, I refer you to the timestamp uh, from from this tweet, 1539. Uh, UK time, which was at the absolute, absolute, absolute low of that move, by the way. Go and verify this for yourself. If the bull run is over today, would you be okay? So it's like icing on the cake. You start to get the bearish tweets coming out at support. Is the bull run over today? Well, this was the follow-up of that tweet. An absolute lovely rise to the upside. And I do want to kind of talk about this. Should I talk about it now or should I talk about it at the end? Uh, yeah, uh, supposedly this rise was because of a uh, news Fed announcement. Yeah, people are like, oh, Bitcoin's rose here because of the Fed announcement. Um, and I'm, I'm here telling you, no, that this is truly not the case. You know, we're marking out the levels where it's going to bounce in advance. We're ready and waiting for that exact level, yeah? So how can how can you possibly say that this rise is because of a Fed announcement it's not. It, the, the, the rise is because we've moved down to the CC, we've moved down to the DNPOC, we've moved down to the PDVAL, uh, we've seen 50 million of trapped shorts, and then we've seen a support come in with a, a bounce underway. Yeah, this is still all occurring while you're below $47,000. Below $47,000 at support. That was actually a CCV setup on the day. I remember posting it in the group. The CCV setup is actually completed for once in its life. Um, you know, E.g. we're at support. This is the level of support that we have been ready and waiting for. So for them to people to come at, over here and say, no, this bounces because of the Fed announcement. It truly blows my mind. It truly, truly blows my mind. Not because of any other reason other than people just cannot, ex people just fail to either comprehend or even accept they're in denial that price is moving because of the technical analysis. Price is moving because of, once again, the order flow that's coming in on these levels and people that actually know what they're doing, able to take advantage of that. Whether you call, whether people then will come at me and say, oh, this is Wells uh, manipulation. Well, no, it's actually not. It's nothing to do with well manipulation. It's about good traders understanding how to make money. And of course, for every winner, there's a loser. So if you think being a good trader means well manipulation, it's just like, 
I, I have no words for you. I, I have no words to that comment because it's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this is not because of the Fed announcement. <laughs> surprise, surprise. It's because of the, it's because we're hitting levels that we have been ready and waiting for. Not only are we ready and waiting for these levels to be hit, when they hit, we see trap shorts. We see buying imbalances out of the level. If, if, if there is a Fed announcement, my answer is who absolutely cares? Who cares about the Fed announcement? Not me. I made money on it. So <laughs> that's all I'm saying. What happened once again? Once again, what happened out of this? We got the rise in price because of the Fed announcement, whatever. We got a rise in price. And once again, there's an emergency. You couldn't make it up, ladies and gentlemen. You could not make this up. Once again, there's an emergency. Yeah, apparently there's another emergency. This is the third or fourth emergency within two days. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Fourth emergency within two days. It's another breakout. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Another single breakout. It's like I reply here to the guy. It's like, come on, man. Like every single rise, it's an emergency breakout. And every single drop, it, it's, a, it's an emergency breakdown. Then there's CC pool just trading the range nice and calm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on Twitch. I'm playing Halo Infinite. I'm absolutely chilling, loving life. Making the simplest trades in the world. Yeah, this is not difficult. I say it's not difficult. Obviously, I understand the theory is advanced, but when you understand the theory, it's not difficult per se. It's just like, you know, a, a builder building a house after 10 years of doing it, he can build the house without thinking. You know, if you're trading for the first day, it's going to be difficult. I've been doing this more than 10 years now. So, of course, you know, understand that. But nevertheless, I'm calmly trading <laughs> without putting too much effort into it. Well, these guys are like, emergency breakdowns up, down, left, right, and center. What was the confluence that we had for this? Once again, during that Twitch, we, we covered a lot on that Twitch live stream, <laughs> looking at the order flow on this low, this low, and then obviously we had the harmonic out of it. Madre mia, madre mia, madre mia, me encanta. Uh, we had that lovely harmonic, and look at this. We recognized this was too quick of a rise for the harmonic, yeah? Because this is way in front of the 0 0.618 Fibonacci time from A, B equals C, D. We want to see at least 0 0.618 on the Fibonacci time. We didn't have that. So obviously looking for a, you know, a bit of a move to the upside. In the end, this did retrace, you know, fairly substantially actually, come down to around 50%. And then we got another, you know, a retest of the high. Okay, we got that retest, and then this is more acceptable because we go past that 0 0.618 Fibonacci type, and it's a really valid harmonic at this point. So obviously from X to A, we came up into the CC originally, remember, for this short position, I mean, we're going back a little bit now, but where was it, where was it, where was it, where was it, there we go, yeah, we obviously came up, at, this is when the harmonic is starting, X, A, we come up into the CC, we come down into the CC, we're looking to finish that harmonic, okay, we up, down into the CC, down into the CC. We finished that harmonic exactly as predicted. <laughs> and once again, trade the charts. This is now euphoric moment, not only because of the euphoric moment because of, oh my God, it's an absolute emergency breakout, but also because you've got the people that are thinking, oh my God, the Fed announcement. How bullish is this? Oh my God, I need to buy, 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 buy. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm actually selling. So thank you very much. And naturally, <laughs> we dropped in price. We dropped in price. Of course we did. And where did we drop to? Well, coming to the icing on the cake now, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the end of the walkthrough. Well, targets of this, we can obviously look for the CC from A to D. And look at this, the CC coming in here at around 46,800. Today, let's add back on our analysis. <laughs> We hit 46,800, okay? We hit it. And obviously, we, we, you can see, you can understand here that there's not a random pivot. There's definitely a support being put up here. We have seen over a 1% bounce to the upside, but naturally, nothing that's making us think to ourselves right now, oh, this is the best support in the world. I want to go all in on this support. No, I think, well, it has been. I've already taken a long scalp from it. I actually did take a long from this, and I've already closed out of the trade, to be honest with you because, well, because it hit my take profit and then I got stopped on the rest of the trade. And this is the thing, like even during this move to the downside, I knew the level that I'm waiting for. Overall, I know the level that I'm waiting for. But that's not to say that during this drop, there's not scalp longs to be had. Just for example, on, you know, this rise here, I was comfortable taking scalp shorts. So while price is dropping, I understand, hey, there's a long opportunity here. Whether that turns into a swing trade, 
I hit take profit one and it continues. Or like today's example, where I've managed to get into a take profit one, you know, get into an entry, sorry, come up to take profit one, stopped on the rest, that's still a winning trade. Okay, the only reason why you can lose these types of trades are, for example, let's say you take it in, you know, in the middle of this move, which is acceptable if you know what you're doing. You enter, you do not take profit one, price drops again, and you hold on to a losing trade. That's obviously a disaster, and you cannot do that as a professional trader. You have to know why and where you lock in take profit one, and then you move your stop loss up to entry. If you get stopped on the rest of that trade, it's still actually a winning trade. Even after fees, you're walking away with money. So the, the important thing here is to acknowledge where you want to take those scalps in advance, where they and how they can turn into potential swing trades, and how you're going to be managing that if and when it does. Where are you compounding? Where are you uh, trading your stop loss to? Okay, these are all things that have to be thought out in advance. So I can say, for example, right now, um, you know, where am I looking for again for another trade? Okay, and I will talk you obviously through that now. I think that's everything that, oh no, the last thing that I wanted to cover, uh, actually, what should I cover first? Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll cover this, I suppose, first of where and why we look, how we can look for the next trade. So, well, that was a, that was a fun talk through to, to begin. I've talked you through the head and shoulders, why this was a long, how it come up into a W breakout, into a short, how it come down to the low for uh, today is the bear market, um, cool to the move to the upside because the Fed and every single high and low was truly because of the technical analysis. And I, I, I don't think you can deny that. Or if you do deny that, after what I've shown you today, then um, I, leave a comment down below and I'll be more than interested to hear, hear how you can can can, can um, count with this. Yeah, I'm, I'm more than interested to read that. But uh, I don't think it's possible. Anyway, interested to see if you think it is. Um, so leading us on to where we are now. Well, clearly we are still at support. Okay, we This is support until it's lost. Okay, so until this is lost, this is support. That's not to say support cannot be lost. Of course it can. But am I looking for a breakout short here? The answer is no. Am I fearful and scared here? The answer is no. Do I acknowledge price can go lower? Yes, of course it can, if this support is lost. But until it is lost, this is obviously support. Let me just remove this harmonic. Uh, I'll remove the CC a second. Yeah, I'll remove the CC. We all know that that was the confluence that you had here, CC on the DMPOC once again, uh, which is no longer a DMPOC, but I've kept it on because of the respect the levels had. Um, so obviously, we, we, we recognize that we're in a range here, okay? So if we take the original um, you know, just, just highlighting this for you a second, the original low here, we can see that's coming in at 46, 200. So we have like a range low, I would say at 40, you know, basically 46, 200. Obviously the range high basically is around $50,000. That, that's the big psychological level that we have here. You know, again, please remember this is a zone. Okay, this is definitely a zone of resistance, but this this is what we're looking at around fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, it's the psychological on our daily, you know, fresh daily here. It's a bit of our zone of of, of range high. So you have our range low well defined. We have our range high really well defined. Okay, we understand when price approaches range low, we're looking for longs. When price approaches range high, we're looking for shorts. Do we have to take a trade? The answer is no. For example, let's just say price blasts up to here and just goes absolutely straight through. Well, then there's no trade taken, is there? Because we're placing an alert, we're trading the reaction. We're looking at the order flow once it's hit. So if you go straight through a level, brilliant, no? <laughs> there's no, there's nothing to be had there. But if we come up, we start to see friction, we start to see trapped traders, and then we, you know, we start to trade that very low term time frame market structure. Well, then we have an absolute valid trade. And this is the beauty of trading. We are not here to predict the future per se. And this is what's confusing for some people. I'm not here to predict the future. I am not here to know next whether price is going up or down. I do not need to know to make money whether price is going to $100,000 or $10,000. That for me is irrelevant. I do not need to know that information. The only information I need to know is where is the next level 
where I can potentially short, and where is the next level where I can potentially long. That's the only information I need. I don't even need to know whether it's going to rise or drop to that level next. The direction for me is irrelevant. The only thing I need to know is when either of those levels are hit, that's where I can trade. Yeah, I don't need to know where price is going. I don't need to sit here with a crystal ball. All I need to know is I know my levels. I know my trade. I know where I get in. I know my stop loss. I know my target. Let's see which way it goes next. That's all I care about because I'm here to make money. And that is how you make money trading. OK, period. Um, so with that said, we could say, well, obviously we are at we are at support right now. As I've already said, I took a scope long off of this already this morning. Could I? Is there another opportunity here? Potentially, to be honest, yes, because right now we are literally just in a, a range within a range within a range. Yeah, we have our range low around 46, you know, 46, 700. We have our range high around 47, 250. So we're really within a local range here. So, of course, if we come down to the range low, there's another long that I would take. Uh, to be absolutely honest with you. Obviously, then if we break out of this range, we can look towards our next level to the upside. So, you know, even on the very low term time frames, there's trading opportunities just as there are on the, on the medium term time frame and the higher term time frames. Um, all I will say is, you know, we're at support right now. If we lose this support, then where's the next level that we can look down towards? Well, for me, this this is really obvious. Uh, well, not obvious, I suppose, but fairly well defined. We have our Fibonacci really simply Fib from the low to the high. And that's obviously our, our CC here. Don't think we need any anything else right now. Um, you know, and that's obviously coming in at around 44,900, the low of the CC there. So again, this is a, a box. If we lose this support, well, we got our really nice um, CC level here. Again, I'll just set an alert trade the reaction but this is where i'll be looking down towards so if i just hide this and this okay then here we go we have our um cc again let me just put this one into here and then hide okay so this is really clean i like to keep my charts really clean <laughs> so we obviously have our cc should we lose this level of support which is obviously support until it's not um, so EG, I'm ready if this support holds and we rise. I am ready if we lose this, where I would be looking for towards next. Okay. Um, so then to the upside. Well, again, very easily and well defined level to the upside. We obviously have fifty thousand dollars being our psychological and our and our daily. Obviously, once again, should we break the CC, we are ready already with more levels to the downside. Okay, because I acknowledge. You know, let's say I'm waiting, you know, I, I'm aware that this is a level of support. Price could come to here, front run it and run without me. If that happens, I am more than perfectly OK with that. I'm not FOMOing into a trade. I just say, hey, I missed this trade. There's another one coming up in an hour. <laughs> Who cares? I'm never going to trace a trade that I miss. Sometimes you miss trades. It's, it's absolutely fine and acceptable. OK, just as if price could come straight down through this level and offer absolutely zero support and we tank through it. Well, again, I'm absolutely OK with that. I'm not offered a trade. I know the next level to the downside. OK, so it is a patience and waiting game. It truly is. This is this is 50 percent of trading, managing those emotions. As I, I understand, trading is a psychological warfare where you are encouraged every single breakdown to be looking for shorts and fearful in every single rise, you know, oh my God, it's a breakout, get really bullish sort of thing. I understand that. And I understand that is why it's difficult. The technicals are not that difficult. The, the difficulty lies in trading your plan. Yeah, not being a sheep to the masses, but actually going against the masses, understanding they're like more than likely going to lose money. I need to think for myself. I need to trade what's actually happening if I want to beat, beat the majority. Now, this is a zero sum game for... Well, obviously, it's not every winner equals a loser, but the vast majority with their with their dollars are losing and, and the few are winning in this game. Yeah. And when you understand that, you, you're not going to want to be a sheep to the masses, are you? I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> you can do whatever you want though, at the end of the day, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what I'd be looking at here, obviously. So then I've, I've, I think I've, I've done it pretty well in explaining the level to the downside that I'd be looking at next the levels to the upside that I'm looking at next. If we break these levels, obviously we can look towards, yeah, that top of the range, 52, then obviously $53,000. Like we know our levels above us should that psychological level break, just as we know our levels below us should the CC break. It truly is just now, a, a, a it's a, truly is a game of waiting. Yeah, let's have some patience. Let's wait for one of these levels to be hit. 
and and that's how you do it that, that's truly how you do it okay um and yeah I, I wanted to end with with this uh which was just uh emphasizing you know yeah i'm looking for longs on a lower term time frame there's absolutely longs to be had for sure i mean i've been taking longs even during this drop but that doesn't mean on the higher term time frame i'm not still really comfortable holding like swing short positions like i posted today um retail going crazy for the bitcoin tap rate. just think of this and just think how funny it is yeah the, the, you know, they're sold the $98,000 Bitcoin dream by X, Y, and Z people. You know, people are selling that $98,000 dream. People are selling the $100,000 dream. They're selling the taproot upgrade. All of this is at the start of the November, yeah? November the 10th. Everybody going absolutely crazy in the world. Oh my God, Bitcoin taproot. How bullish is this? You know, like I emphasize here, this was quite possibly the best day of the year for me as I traded the my long-term plan which was obviously shorting at $69,000 and truly just trade that plan. This was actually a very large short position taken by myself on Bybit. And I suppose this is a little bit of a cool fact, but this was also taken on uh, Bitfinex, like a, an OG exchange, which I yeah decided to trade on as well recently. But uh, yeah, that was taken on Bybit, Bitfinex. And you know, it's just like, trade the plan at the end of the day, you know, you've got your levels, you've got it marked out, you know what you're waiting for, you know what you want to trade, it's $69,000 short, who cares about what other people are saying with this dream of $98,000, who cares about the taproot upgrade, e.g. the fundamentalists are going to be thinking to themselves, this is ultra bullish, I'm here trading the charts, I was here one year in advance, telling my group $69,000 is a major Bitcoin target, based off of Elliott Waves, based off of Fibonacci extensions, and I'm taking it. Um, why, why, why on earth would I close this short? Well, the answer is I'm not going to close this short because there's absolutely zero sign of strength on the medium to higher term timeframes. So why on earth would I close that? I'm not going to until I see a major sign of strength. Obviously, this is my short. And then this was a lovely comment. Uh, feeling very fortunate to learn from the best. Thank you, Daniel, for sharing your mastery of, with all of the chart champions. Other members as well getting in on that lovely short position. Okay, obviously, both of us still in that trade as we speak right now. Um, paying funding is a good position to be in, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, that was the talk through of the analysis that we've had up to this date, where we are now, why we're bouncing, you know, bouncing per se. We've seen a 1% bounce. Could it end more? We'll wait and see. If not, we fall down towards our next level. I've talked you through how we are understanding and comprehending every pivot high, every pivot low, why we're looking for those trap traders. We saw on every high and every low. This is really perfect. The order flow is very nice at the moment. Very, very, very nice. And how we have to go against the majority in that regards. And it is a Friday. So I'm going to end with, as you are, as I am kind of doing as a tradition now, with these longer videos on a Friday talking about a little bit of my opinions, things that we're working towards and, you know, building up a, building up the community, I suppose, making it stronger. And um, actually, yeah, this was one other thing that I wanted to talk about. Also at that high, this is what you have to be careful with, yeah? The people that speak in absolutes, because there's one thing that you will notice, um, people that people that speak in absolutes, like they definitely know what's going to happen. This is a this is a really big red flag. Yeah. So if somebody comes at you and they says this is happening, um, e.g. I remember during this drop myself, because I kind of take note of, of some of these things like the bottom is in by now, the bottom is in, you know, people like absolute adamant, the bottom is in. Yeah. If you see somebody say the bottom is in by now, and they are like talking in absolutes, like the bottom is in, and they refuse to acknowledge that it's possible that that is not the case i think you should um unfollow i mean i think you should take caution i think i suppose is the right word you can follow them if you want but speaking in absolutes in a game of probabilities is a major red flag this is a major red flag and it literally is this the blind leading the blind these people that are getting liquidated are talking about these breakout head and shoulders patterns speaking in you know speaking like this in in absolutes of what is happening nobody is bullish enough the bitcoin bottom is in it's just like just take care if you speak in absolutes this is a major red flag i mean um i i shall i talk about this very briefly yes why not how are these people making money they're getting liquidated on their own trades so how are they able to flex money you watching this, well, maybe not you directly watching this video, because hopefully you're learning from myself, but their followers are their fuel. Yeah. When they are calling 
for these breakdowns, yeah? When they are calling, then 24 hours later from a breakdown to a breakup, their followers are short in here and getting liquidated. Their followers are long in here and getting liquidated. And guess what is in common with these people? They are shilling hard affiliate links. And the affiliate links will pay out when the followers get liquidated. When there is a liquidation, they will get paid. So essentially, you know, they're baiting in their followers to take these highly leveraged trades to in turn get liquidated and they are taking the full benefits of that. This is why I truly am against their business practice. Yeah, because they are literally making money from, in, 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 in my opinion, very dirty ways. Yeah, this is, this is not good. And I know I am like, yeah, majorly uh, putting myself out here because it's gonna get backlash. And I know that the people themselves here are subscribed to this channel and this will be seen. But hey, I'm not that bothered. You know, I'm not bothered. I'm here to, to make people aware of what's going on. Yeah. And that's what's going on. Why are they continuously trying to encourage breakdown shorts when you really shouldn't be? Basically, they want to see liquidations. Why do they want to see liquidations? Because they're getting paid from those liquidations. Yeah use your brain, understand that, and then you, maybe you'll start to understand why I'm so against these people, why, is, why I'm, you know, actively calling them out, not only because of the shady business practices, obviously, because I've, I've met some of them in real life, and, you know, extremely rude, not nice, I could go on, uh, I've talked about that before, but... Yeah, just be very, very, very careful, I suppose, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be the blind, leading the blind. Educate, learn, and hopefully empower yourself not to fall into those traps. Anyway, I wanted to uh, end with a bit of a positive notice, actually. And that was, um, you know, I like to end with some positivity. Let, let's forget about everything else. Let's forget about the shady business practices. Let's forget about the scams. Let's focus on something positive. Let's focus and end this video with sharing some love and sharing some, you know, good positive thoughts because we don't want to, we don't want to end with anything bad. We want to end with something good. And um, because we are positive, we are loving and we are here in the holiday season. And that is, um, I truly believe, and I've seen it with my eyes, if you do focus on trading the technicals, if you do fo focus on conquering that psychological aspect of trading and the emotions that come with it, you can reap the rewards, okay? And, you know, just for emphasizing the point, you know, we can come across to here, long-term members, you know, for, for example, here, Doltex, you know, Insanes, you know, making good gains. E.g., when you put in, oh, here we go, Moderator, right? This is a funny one. Moderator is even coming over here and taking trades and making money. You know, it's um, CCTR, strategies that are complex, but they will pay out. E.g., it's what I'm trying to emphasize here is if you truly put in the time and understand what you're doing here, you can absolutely reap the rewards. Reap the rewards. Yeah. So it's it's what I'm what, what I'm saying here is put in the time. It's not easy, but once you absolutely can conquer that, you can make money. And then you need to think to yourself, as I've you know, I've talked about this in other videos, once you do reach that place of making money you know, once you've hit your goal of financial freedom through trading or whatever your goal may, may be, maybe it's a, a part-time venture while you stay in your full-time job, whatever that thing, reason may be, if you are good at trading, you will make more money. And yeah, that's a simple fact. So once you have secured that money, you need to think to yourself, what are you going to do with this money? Okay, this is, the, this is a very, very focal point within this arena that we need to be thinking about. And we obviously, oh, I myself have went against the the norms, I suppose. And this isn't uh, anything to say. Oh, look at me! It's more to to bring uh, awareness to what you can do, I suppose. And this has been, you know, my 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 viewpoint on this is I don't personally like to share, but I acknowledge the amount of requests that I've had to share are absolutely unbelievable. And actually, um, you know. Although I might stigmatize myself about it, it is positive and it does encourage other people to, to, to hopefully follow suit, I suppose. So, um, yeah, myself personally, obviously, I've hit every financial goal I could possibly have. Um, you know, I've done very, very well for myself, I suppose. And 
I feel blessed. I feel happy. And, um, you know, to be in that position I'm in is, is obviously uh, wonderful. But I, I could have two motives now, couldn't I? I could fall under the motive of extreme greed. I could become an ooh, an influencer which accepts money backhandedly for promoting altcoins and shilling them to the public. Oh, you want you want to know the next altcoin to pop? Oh, let's take some money from the from the backhand of that company and I'll promote it on YouTube for uh, you know pretending it's I understand the fundamentals. No, this is never going to be me. I'm never going to fall into this category. I'm never going to be here shilling you anything. I'm just comfortable and happy where I am. <laughs> uh, you know, there's no there's no greed involved here. Okay, and I have I I now am actually going to be giving back, and this is something that I was really debating. I'm not sure how in depth I'm going to go, but if you've been following for over a year, you will know I was very interested in the projects over in Colombia, over in Mexico, building schools. Uh, you know, just really getting my hands dirty and and you know giving giving back to the best I can is something that is fulfilling to myself, fulfilling to others. And um, I just think making the world a better place, I suppose. But I believe we're making the world a better place by by teaching people and educating them. And then also giving back to the people that, you know, are never even going to understand, well, never is the wrong word, that currently don't even know what trading is. Uh, you know, young kids at school that don't even have a school that, that need one sort of thing. So yeah, this is kind of my dreams and goals, and they're finally coming to to fruition. You know, it's a long process to do these type of things because you buy the land, build. You know, it's a, anyway, it's a long process. But you know, I'm finally finally starting to see this, and it's and it's, and it's really, really, really beautiful. Um, so like what I'm what I'm saying here is, when you get your amount of money, whether you make you know an extra ten thousands or whether you make a, an extra ten million, it's it's, it's irrelevant. Um, the, the, the important thing is, is what are you going to do with that extra money? Yeah. Uh, when, when are you going to be content? Because if you can never be content with, you know, let's say, you, you know, you reach the, the very successful, you reach hundred, hundreds of millions. Yeah. You reach hundreds of millions, which obviously I've completed. It's like, this is more money than really you ever going to need in your life. For, for, you know, literally this is more money you ever going to need. What, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to fall into the category of, um, you know, extreme greed? And it's, it's something, you know, it's never enough. You're never fulfilled. You know, you're out every week buying a new car. You're, you're buying the private jets. You're you're buying a woman. You're buying, you know, everything to appear to the outside world that oh, everything's good. Everything's happy. Like you're enjoying life. I think that personally, and I can kind of, I have fell, fallen under this category, I suppose. You know, I have bought expensive cars. I have you know, wasted money per se on mm, possessions. And I, I understand what is fulfilling in life. Let's just keep our eye on Bitcoin. <laughs> I understand what's fulfilling in life. And it, uh, again, I'm not trying to preach. I'm not trying to convert people, but I'm just speaking about my own experiences. You know, uh, you, you go out, you buy a new Ferrari, let's say, yeah, this is brilliant. It, it is fun for, for a week. And I'm not even joking. One week later, it's like, you know, actually, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. It's it's a little bit underwhelming. Uh, you know, yes, it's a great piece of machinery, but it gets old. Honestly, it gets old after not even a week. It's like, OK, where, where's the next enjoyment coming from? And when you like understand this and once you've been through this, I suppose, um, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Obviously, this is the world of, of, of differences you know, money is everything when you don't have it. Like, I understand this. Like, when you don't have money, you, you know, from you might think, oh, this guy's saying this, what what, a, what, a, what an asshole. But true, truly, I understand that money is very, very, very important, especially when you don't have it. But, you know, when you, when you, when you are um, not at that stage yet. I understand, of course, money is paying your bills. It's helping you get through life. And, of course, it's great importance. But when you have that money, it's like, it's, it's it, it very much loses its importance. You understand what is important in life, and it's not it's it's not money. It's it's the relationships. It's it's the love, and it's the connections that you form with real, honest, genuine people. Okay, that that's the important thing. And so for me, it's like I'm I'm really focused on trying to give back and be you know just be. I I don't want to keep all my money basically, and so I've I have been working on this silently and I and I was very hesitant to even like announce any of this because I don't want to do this you know I'm doing this because I want to not because 
you know i just view sometimes i'm really cautious that I, you know it can be viewed in a really wrong light but i personally i'm going to be donating 90 percent of my personal tangible assets so i'm basically offloading it or selling it not because i need the money but because i actually want to give it away i'm selling it to to get this and and, and donate it essentially um so i can really you know so i can get rid of this cut myself from the possessions live more of a a free life and you know just just give back to as many people as possible because obviously a lot of my stuff is in non-tangible assets <laughs> so this is a little bit difficult it takes a little bit more time but the tangible assets you know i can i can free myself of these relatively quickly and you know start the processes uh which have already been started by the way for over six months but now recently i was like hey why not talk about this but it's so like this one the other day funny conversation sold that car <laughs> Sold a quite an ex, you know quite a nice car for a relatively cheaper car. Guy thought I was absolutely failing in life, not understanding. Well, actually, why, why do I need these possessions for that? For some people, it's kind of like, a, what the hell is going on here? Um, but yeah, I, I'm a man. This this video has ended in a weird way. You're probably hating it, <laughs> but I just wanted to really just focus on the the, the message here of, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I suppose we'll end like this. Let me just think my thoughts. I haven't had, had this so planned out. Uh, I suppose we'll just end by saying this. Everybody in the world, me, you, your neighbor, the person down the street, the your idol, your, your person struggling living on the streets, all of these people, everybody in the world, irrelevant of race, irrelevant of gender, irrelevant of status irrelevant of amount of followers you have you know the amount of people. oh this guy has a lot of followers he must be a good guy he must know what he's on about no all of these things are totally irrelevant everybody is equal everybody is the same so when you truly truly not just say this but act like this too treating everybody as one treating everybody with the love and respect they deserve if you are in a privileged position to help out then the people that, that need that help I think you're just going to start to feel really, really warm and, and good inside. So rather than buying the cars, rather than buying the jets, rather than buying material possessions, yes, it's good for temporary enjoyment, but for long-lasting happiness, I think you want to focus on your fellow, um, your fellow humans, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know the right word here. But just actually, you know, giving as much as possible, you know, giving your time, giving your love, giving your support and, you know, not because you want anything in return, but because you truly just want to see someone smile. Like if I do something good and I receive a warm comment, I receive a smile like some of these people that I'm helping, I don't even understand what they're saying because of the language barriers, but I understand a smile and it's like, um, it warms your heart even though you have no idea what they're saying it's still is heartwarming you know and um yeah that that's what i want to end with i just want to end with don't try your very best and I, I i cannot speak above anybody because i'm not above anyone i'm probably below everyone i'm just a normal 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 guy that become lucky i suppose you could say through trading and um yeah i'm truly 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 just trying to say don't w don't waste your money to try and impress others yeah because i think a lot of people on social media a lot of people on the internet they're so obsessed with what other people think about them mm, it's really really bad trap to fall into yeah because you're just always obsessed with what other people think you're always buying these expensive things not because you want it not because it makes you feel good but because other people will think you're doing well. And it's like, I wrote, yeah, this is what I was saying the other day. Like for me to sell my car collection, it was a multi-million <laughs> car collection. It, for me to sell this and to buy like an absolute quote unquote, like bad car is like the total opposite of what most people in my position would be doing. Because most people are going to be buying those cars because it looks good on the internet. I'm getting rid of them because I realized why did I do this in the first place? It's kind of dumb. And I don't, I don't want this. I, I don't know. I don't want the highlights. I don't want this, the spotlight in that regards. I just want to, um, 
just not, 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 just not an interest for myself. So I think living more low key is is the, the best way. Now this is kind of hard, and this is for me really difficult because I want to live low key, but I also want to come on here make these videos because I truly, truly believe and can see that it is actually helping people. So it's like a double knife sword for myself because uh, one part of me, and again, this is on a tangent, one part of me is like, I don't want to do YouTube because it is like a spotlight that I don't really need or want, but at the same time, it's like, I need to do this because of the greater good. Anyway, like this is very off topic, but yeah, this is a double knife sword, but at the end of the day, it's doing more good than bad. So obviously, I'm, I'm you know, I'm continue with it. Um, but anyway, wow, a 50 minute video. What is this? A very long video. I think this might be the longest. Well, I hope you've hope you've thoroughly enjoyed it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> we just have to laugh. We just have to smile, ladies and gentlemen. I truly hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope that you haven't think. Um, well, I just truly hope you've enjoyed. I, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've understood where I'm coming from with some of my uh, analysis, some of my thoughts, how we must trade the charts, not get bullish at resistance, not get bearish at support. Um, might be another long opportunity here. Um, e.g. supports holding. If it lost, we look down towards the next level. Um, I've talked you through how we look at, you know, on a very brief look at we've looked at the order flow, how we're recognizing that. Again, this is not hindsight. This was live in the time as it's happening. You know, we're ready, waiting for the levels. We're then looking at those levels live on stream together and, you know, looking for the reactions, looking how that goes next. We see it, we trade it. You know, we've made money off of this. Not with no random pivots on the chart. Absolutely, it is beautiful. It it truly is. Um, we've then moved on to you know, <laughs> I don't know if exposing is the right word, but making you aware of these people are making money off of your misfortunes. Be careful. And then hopefully you've understood. I've tried to end in a positive note of you know why I want to get rid of everything and um, truly give back because I I think this is the a good way to approach life. And I hope you can share that opinion with myself. Um, for everything else, obviously, we are here for everything you need in terms of trading, in terms of psychology and the emotions. Um, you know, we obviously have our, our community um, to come over and, and chat to us. So if you want to chat, if you want to make some friends, uh, friends you can make. Thank you ever so much. I'll see you, I suppose, over in the Discord or over on Twitter or over on Twitch, one of these. And I'm just going to say thank you ever so much, everybody. Honestly, uh, my heart goes out to you all. Thank you, thank you. The support and positivity every day just outstands me. Um, yeah, it, it truly is just amazing. Like, my heart goes out to you all. Thank you ever so much. Um, I feel blessed, happy, and um, I, I, just, just I just, just love you, I suppose. Thank you ever so much. CC Paul, send their regards, and here's to the next. Uh, here's to the next trade. Thank you, and goodbye. Cheers. One final thing. Wow, no financial advice in this video. <laughs> there we go. No financial advice. Of course, this video is entertainment education only. Needed to remember that. Wow, otherwise I'd have made a Thank you ever so much, and goodbye. <laughs>